Lesson number 11. From this lesson, I will teach you five basic shogi tactics. First of all, basic tactic number one is fork. A fork is when one of your pieces simultaneously attacks two of your opponent's pieces. Look at this example. You can fork the rook and the bishop by dropping your knight here. Well, what is good about creating a fork is that you'll certainly be able to capture one of the two pieces. Because in this example, white can save only one of its pieces. So if the rook runs away, you win the bishop. And if bishop runs away, you win the rook. Now let's do some exercise. Do you see any fork here by a silver? Well, this may be a fork, but it's nonsense. It's going to be just captured. So the answer is this. You can win the exchange. How about this one? Yes, you can fork by a rook. Like this, or like this. How about this? You're right, fork with a bishop. Now, do you see any fork here? You can fork by gold. How about this? You can fork by a dragon. Then how about this? Your king is checked. Yeah. Even a king can create a fork sometimes. Okay, how about this one? How do you win material here? First you attack the silver like this. Now if white tries to save the silver, it's going to just worsen the situation with this fork. So in this case, white would probably go at this to minimize the damage. So you can win material like this. Now let's see what you can do when your pieces are forked. Well, there's a good shogi proverb for this. It's don't escape from a fork. Oh, by the way, there are a lot of proverbs for shogi that helps you find good moves. I want to make a lesson on those sometime. Anyway, don't escape from a fork means you shouldn't try to save a piece when it's forked. Because you're going to lose the other piece anyway. And even if you don't save the pieces, your opponent can capture only one piece, right? So why not leave them that way and find a better move instead? So for instance, you can see white is going to fork your pieces. But don't care. Let's go like this. Now they're forked. Well, leave them that way. White needs one more move to take it. Now, White's king is in big trouble. Well, however, there are cases where you should react to a fork, of course. One of those cases is, of course, when one of the pieces is much more valuable than the other. But the case that I want to talk about is when you can save both pieces. This is the example. In this case, you can let the rook escape 
and check the king at the same time. So after white reacts, you can save the bishop too. So substantially, this knight wasn't forking. How about this? Yes, you can save the bishop first by checking. And the rook. How about this? You see how you can save both pieces? Yes. How about this one? Yeah, it's easy. And this? Well, you can promote. Or maybe this. How about this one? Yeah. This? Right. How about this one? You can save both the goals by dropping your bishop. White forks again, but you drop the bishop again. Now you save them. How about this fork? Yeah, you can use the bishop. How about this fork? In this case, I think you should take the gold and check the king. And then move the bishop. Well, it's not a good exchange for you, but it's better than exchange your piece with a knight. And the gold was doing a very good job in protecting the king, so you gained something by removing it. And what is more, now this knight is doing nothing. So it's like white just lost a knight. Now how about this? Do you have a good idea? Well, in this case, you can let the bishop escape like this. If white takes the rook, it'll be checkmate. So the king has to react. And now you can let the rook escape. Okay, now how do you react to this fork? Yeah, the king can escape and protect the gold simultaneously. It's even attacking the rook. Now, what if the king can't move that way? You have no choice but to lose the gold? Well, if you have a knight in hand, you can save both. How do you minimize your damage here? Are you going to lose the dragon for nothing? No, you can exchange it with a bishop. Now this is the last example. How do you minimize the damage? Instead of just losing the horse you can sacrifice a knight to save it but white might still choose to take the horse if the horse was doing too good a job in the situation. 
and maybe he folds like this. So what are you gonna do if you don't even want to exchange the horse for anything? Well, in that case, you can sacrifice the lance like this by simultaneously blocking and checking. After it's taken, you deal with the check as you like. Okay, that's all for this lesson. I will explain other four basic tactics in later lessons. Goodbye.